from a bracket, install the new pull-off to the old bracket. Install the new one in reverse order of removal by carefully connecting the linkage and reinstalling the mounting screws. Tighten the mounting screws securely. Lastly, make sure you check the adjustment once it is installed. To do so, connect up a hand vacuum pump and with light finger pressure on the choke blade, apply vacuum to the choke pull-off. With a drill bit of the appropriate size, measure the opening distance between the choke blade and housing. Generally, there should be between 1 8 and 3 16 of an inch gap. But make sure you check a Haynes manual for the correct specification on your vehicle. If it is not within specifications, reset it by turning the adjustment screw or by putting a slight bend in the linkage. Reinstall the air cleaner and reconnect any hoses removed earlier. Once adjusted, start the engine to be sure of proper operation. Now let's briefly recap the steps for testing and replacing a choke pull-off. First, remove the air cleaner and inspect the vacuum hose and connecting linkages. If damage or deterioration is found, perform necessary repairs before continuing. Then start the engine or connect a hand vacuum pump and apply 20 inches of vacuum. Watch for movement of the diaphragm. If no movement is noticed, replace it. If you're performing the test with a hand vacuum pump, check for a bleed hole that may have to be covered during the procedure. To replace a choke pull-off, disconnect the vacuum hose and remove the mounting screws. Carefully disconnect the linkage while removing the pull-off from the carburetor. Compare the old and new parts to be sure of proper replacement. In some cases, you may have to change a bracket from the old one to the new one. Position the new pull-off onto the carburetor while carefully reconnecting the linkage to it. Reinstall and tighten the mounting screws and vacuum line. Check and adjust the pull-off as per the instructions detailed in a Haynes manual. If your vehicle has a carburetor, whether it's computerized or not, it is still equipped with a choke thermostat. Your choke thermostat will most likely resemble one of these and will be located on the side of the carburetor, in which case they are referred to as an integral choke. Or they will be located on the intake or exhaust manifold and connected to the carburetor via linkage, in which case they are referred to as a divorce choke. In either case, your choke thermostat might even have a wire coming from it. This wire is connected to a small heater that sits next to the bimetal spring to assist choke operation once the ignition key is turned on. Choke thermostats can fail in two different manners. The most common manner is when the bimetal spring inside the thermostat becomes weak and will not totally close the choke blade during cold weather. Symptoms of this type of failure include hard starting when cold, or engine stumbles or stalls upon acceleration during the engine warm-up period. The other manner in which a choke thermostat can fail is when it fails to totally open the choke after the engine is fully warm. This can cause sluggish engine performance, poor fuel economy, black smoke out the tailpipe, or even failure to pass a state emissions test. To check your choke thermostat, remove the air cleaner and snap the throttle. If the outside air temperature is less than 50 degrees and the engine has not been run in the last five or more hours, the choke blade should snap all the way closed. The other test requires you to run the engine until it is at full operating temperature. This will usually take about 10 minutes or five to eight miles of highway driving. With the engine shut off and the air filter cover removed, check to make sure the choke blade is totally open. If yours is electrically assisted, test to make sure you have power at the electrical connector. With the ignition key in the run position and with the engine cold, disconnect the electrical connector at the thermostat and in its place, connect a voltmeter. Most vehicles require 8 volts or above for proper choke thermostat operation. If voltage is not present at this wire, check for open circuits and repair the electrical wiring before replacing the choke thermostat. The items you may need to replace your choke thermostat include a Phillips or large flat blade screwdriver, a needle nose pliers, a 3 8 drive socket set, and a Haynes manual for your particular vehicle. 
In most cases, you will have to remove the air cleaner to gain access to the choke thermostat. To replace a divorce choke, first disconnect the linkage rod from the carburetor. Now remove the choke thermostat cover or stove if so equipped, and remove the linkage rod from the thermostat. Remove the mounting screw or bolt and remove the choke thermostat from its mounting position. Compare the new and old thermostats to be sure of proper replacement. Set the new thermostat in position and start the bolt by hand to prevent cross-threading. Tighten the bolt securely once installed. Reattach the linkage rod to the choke thermostat and reinstall the thermostat cover or stove. Reconnect the linkage to the carburetor and reinstall the linkage clip. Move the throttle and check to make sure there isn't any interference or binding of linkages. Reinstall the air cleaner housing and you're done. To replace an integral style choke, once again you will have to remove the air cleaner assembly. Note the routing and attachment points of any hoses connected to the air cleaner. Place a small mark on the graduated scale of the choke housing as to the position of the thermostat you are removing. If so equipped, disconnect the electrical connection from the terminal on the outside of the choke. Remove the small screws that secure the choke thermostat in place. Be careful not to drop or lose the small retaining clips. A magnetic screwdriver comes in handy if they are metal screws and clips. With the screws removed, you can grasp, twist, and remove the thermostat from the carburetor. Once again, Compare the new and old thermostat to be sure of correct installation. Position the new choke thermostat on the housing, making sure to engage the tab on the thermostat with the notch in the choke linkage. Once positioned, move the thermostat back and forth several times while watching the choke blade. If correctly installed, the choke blade should move freely along with the movement of the thermostat. Then, reinstall the retaining screws and ring or clips and gently snug them up. Don't fully tighten them at this point. Consult the Haynes manual for the correct adjustment specification on your vehicle. Adjust the line on the thermostat to the correct position on the scale of the choke housing. Once adjusted, fully tighten the retaining screws. Then, reconnect the electrical connector to the thermostat. Reinstall the air cleaner and start the vehicle to test the choke for proper operation. Let's recap the steps involved for testing and replacing your choke thermostat. To test your choke thermostat for correct cold operation, the engine must not have been run for about five hours and the outside temperature must be less than 50 degrees. Remove the air cleaner cover and snap the throttle. The choke plate should fully close. If not, replace the choke thermostat. The other test requires you to run the engine until it is at full operating temperature. Shut the engine off and once again remove the air cleaner cover. The choke blade at the top of the air horn should be fully open. If your choke thermostat is electrically assisted, check for voltage at the feed wire with the ignition switch in the run position. Most vehicles require 8 volts or above at the wire for this proper operation. If voltage is not present at this wire, repair the electrical circuit before replacing the choke thermostat. To replace your choke thermostat, in most cases you will have to remove the air cleaner. On divorced chokes, remove the choke stove if so equipped and remove the mounting screw or bolt that attaches the thermostat to the manifold. Then remove the linkage from where it attaches to the carburetor. Compare the new and old units to be sure of the correct replacement. Carefully reconnect the linkage to the carburetor and reinstall any clips that may have been removed. Reposition the new thermostat in place and reinstall the mounting screw. Reposition the choke stove if removed earlier, or reconnect any electrical connections. Move the throttle and check to make sure there aren't any linkages binding. On integrally mounted chokes, note the position of the choke setting on the graduated scale. Disconnect the electrical connection if so equipped. Remove the small screws that secure the thermostat and remove the thermostat from the housing. Compare the new and old thermostats to be sure of correct replacement. Position the new thermostat on the housing making sure to engage the tab of the thermostatic spring with the notch on the choke linkage. Reinstall the retaining clips and screws and adjust it as per the instructions in a Haynes manual.